Let's quickly go over some of those big uh, Emmy nominations that just came out. For us, it was last week, if you're listening to today. But we have some pretty heavy hitters uh, this year. With this us living in a sort of platinum age of TV, this is some wild, wild stuff. And it's going to be really hard to pick. You know, I've, it's, But it, depending on what your tastes are or what the critics will look for this year, uh, there's some strong contenders for everything. Um, and so what we're going to do is go over some of just like the top categories. We'll go through the the main series and some of the acting categories. And if we have some, we have a bonus round with uh, some of the music if we can. Ooh, so that'll nice. be hot. Uh, so first up, I'm going to let Anthony lead the discussion on this one for best drama series. All right. Best drama series. Have you seen Breast. all of them? Have I? Almost. Let me check really quick. <laughs> not, he has not seen Succession yet. Or Yellow Jackets because I do not have Showtime. But, supposed to be hella good. So, best drama series. You got Better Call Saul. Watch it. <laughs> you got Euphoria. Surprisingly good. Watch it. Um, Ozark. Definitely watch it. Netflix. Severance on Apple TV Plus. For sure. Very watch good. It. Watch it. For sure. Squid Game. Everybody probably saw yeah, it already. Everybody saw it. So, watch it again if you want to. Uh, also on Netflix, Stranger Things. Everybody but Zach watched it. On well, Netflix. Zach hasn't so, seen Squid Game. I'm a little either. confused though because bless you, twice. Thank so, you. is this Stranger Things season Ooh. four part one that's being nominated? Because they've done that before, where shows would go on break, like let's say Breaking Bad, they split their last season in two, and part one got nominated but that year, and then part two got nominated the following season for Stranger part? Things. Technically, but the speaking. thing is. The Emmys, yeah, kind of have a cutoff date, so I don't know if their cutoff date counts part two or not. I don't know if it's just based on when the show premieres or if it's based on premiere and end date. And, and, yeah. Because if it is end date, then it's possible that part two maybe wasn't Could part be, of it. Yeah. So I don't know. Who knows? Uh, I would hope that they just make it simple and just say it's the whole season, uh, because as a whole, it was fantastic. Even the first part was great. Um, Succession, HBO. I've heard it's fantastic. Uh, they run away with it every time. Yeah, it's they've been winning be the past few years. Amazing so drama. Even though all, pretty much all of these on this list, I can the majority of them I could vouch for. Um, if Succession wins again, then that just means like how we that shows it. how good that show is because all these other shows are great. May I interject very quickly? We're talking about cutoff dates for the Emmys. According to my quick research, May thirty first. <laughs> Is when the cutoff date is, so it's going to so, be the first half of and Stranger Things, and that's when Stranger Things, yeah. I think, came out. So that it means came out like the twenty seventh, six, yes, that. that was on Memorial Day week weekend. So that means, um, we'll be <laughs> this is amazing because so, so this it's part be, two will be nominated, be able to be nominated for but next year. But do we know that though? Because that's the thing. Will will they just kind of clump it in? I don't think they will. I mean, because it says so May <laughs> any any material that's came out before May thirty first of any given year. Hmm. So, but June June first into May thirty first. So I mean, it it's the same sense. thing with Better Call Saul. Maybe then. that's why they split it because they won. That's what I think is going to happen. Better Call now. Saul Part Two just started like a week ago. So it, I, it should be eligible for next. They year. wanted it to be eligible for next year. Hmm. That's that's stacking that's the deck. Get all these nominations or things. things. Mm -hmm. Got them. Yellow Jackets is the final one for drama, which is on Showtime, and that I remember was getting a lot of buzz when it came out. Christina no pun intended, Ricci. because it's a a B. The yep. yellow jacket is a type of B, but yeah, I've heard it's also very good and very intense. So, if you guys have Showtime, check out Yellow Jackets. So that is your drama series lineup. Uh, I think uh, if we're personally, if I go for a pick, I'm gonna put uh, Severance like uh, on my ballot. I have like little things of what I want to win, and then what I think is actually gonna win. Like I want yeah. Severance to win because it's just how just. Totally well put together and weird, but amazing that show is, and well acted, well written. Uh, but they, uh, Succession is such a such a powerhouse. It's leading the Emmys in total nominations right now. It has twenty five total nominations. But uh, but Severance crazy. has be like came up and just like hit everybody upside the head with its great blend of like weirdness. It's like it, it reminds me a lot of Mister Robot. It's just very deliberate. There's a lot. Everything's there on purpose. There's all the details are put into place. And it's extremely well acted. It wraps it all up mm -hmm. too perfectly. While still setting other good stuff up. That, so. That's your pick, Severance? Yeah, my pick, Severance. Right. Danny? 
It's tough, man. <sighs> He's like, oh, yeah. say Stranger Things. I'm going to say probably Severance or Stranger Things. I think Succession might win just because of how crazy everything the is. The clout. Yeah. But those would be my two. Uh, maybe also Euphoria. I think Euphoria might have a chance with Succession. But I mean, I think Anthony knows that, like, off of the, it's what it's his second season yeah yeah very second season. is the second season better than the first i don't think so but it definitely has some really strong strong episodes yeah. okay yeah that's i think that's enough that's pretty good any any thought or opinions zach so i haven't seen any of these shows <laughs> so just pick one <laughs> just pick one. and i do have a couple of them on my list that i want to watch but i guess based off of what i've been hearing i feel like it could be between severance Stranger Things, uh, Succession, maybe like a f- distant fourth Squid Game. Squid Game might but, have some like, if it was like a fan popularity, maybe yeah. Squid Games would win. But. I, I feel like like I feel like it it had a lot of hype to it. It was a lot of people liked it a lot. It was apparently like just something that was different than your typical like, yeah. With, drama sort series, of. But... with that, with uh, I, I, not that I take umbrage to that when people say it's so different, unique. Anthony and I are like, man, we've seen this stuff in anime. Like, yeah, it's like you guys aren't watching anime. <laughs> well, yeah, You're watching, yeah, like, like, like anime. I feel like is a much smaller, market. but like to the wide market of people that saw Squid Game, it was just yeah. everyone saw Squid right. Game, except you, Zach. Except uh, <laughs> everyone saw. Oh, which I'm so debating it. if I want to watch. I would. It's, it's good. Yeah, yeah, you should. It, but... You. It's not. It's definitely worth your time to watch. You'll watch that and. At the end of it, go wow! This was worth my time. It's entertaining. It's well produced, well made. Yeah. Um, it's kind of jarring, and but you, you gotta take it. Yeah, is, is there the hook is still there, man? It's still good. And it's only one season so far, so you slap them up. You could, uh, <laughs> yeah, watch them and up pretty quick. Yeah, like season two was announced to be in production, or was going to be in, yeah. in yeah. production soon. So, so maybe maybe it'll get me to watch it. Maybe maybe. So I would say that maybe I would. Take it down to like Severance or Stranger Things. Okay. Right. Between one of those two, it... just pick Yellow Jackets. He's, if, like, <laughs> he's if, like, I'll be the odd guy. Yellow Jackets. Knowing that part two of or volume two of Stranger Things um, came out after the cutoff date, I would have like if, if it had come out before, I would have said maybe Stranger Things, but I'm probably gonna say Severance as, right. as my guess. Cool. Right on. Very cool. Uh, so moving on from super serious drama, we move into comedy series. Mine was Stranger Things, by the way. Oh wow, I totally skipped you. I'm very sorry. <laughs> so for sure, like your your actual yeah, pick I mean, of it's a super tough. But the only reason I'm not picking Better Call Saul is because it's most likely part one. It's just like part one was good, but like I bet you, if it was the whole season, I would probably pick it. Yeah. And, and understandable. But Stranger Things, sense. even though it's also part one, but it's seven of nine episodes so it was a strong and those seven, seven episodes. episodes were great i think it was the best that stranger things has been dude the opening for so episode good. four was out of hand the whole, the whole episode four yeah, like episode four i was like what awesome. the hell yeah it was really well so and then that, episode three yeah like, oof. so yeah or as, was it five as awesome as better call saul is severance and what four. i've heard of succession like when i started watching stranger things it was just it was completely different than the other seasons I was like this is these guys went up to another level, and they like they definitely they brought it this season. So, I, I I'd pick Stranger Things. Cool. Do yeah. it next. What is well, it? I have my pick yeah. for comedy. All right. Comedy. So, uh, yeah, let's move <laughs> over to comedy. Is... So, I'll uh, I'm gonna do the rundown for a comedy series. Mm. Uh, the first yeah. one is a newcomer, which is supposed to be extremely good. I just gotta get around to watching. I think it's on Hulu or ABC. It's Abbott Elementary. Uh, just a real like dark horse coming out of nowhere. Uh, then we have Barry. You guys which love Barry. Barry is Barry's... out of hand. Dude, this thing is, was nuts. Like, it's such a good show, but, but it's not entirely a comedy. It's like, it's a dramedy. It's more dramedy but, like, than anything it's, else. It's now. still so good, though. Then you have Kirby Enthusiasm, which over uh, like December <laughs> of this pa- December of last of 2021 going into this year, I finally got a chance to watch all of Curb and uh, this season good job. was uh, has some interesting things in it, uh, but. <laughs> Uh, it's still like it's it's still like your solid curb stuff. It's really funny. Uh, this other one, next one that I need, really we'll need to get to watching is uh, Hacks uh, with uh, Gene Smart. That's ex- extremely good. Marvelous Ms. Maisel. I need to watch it, but 
I remember think it was a comedy. Like Rachel Brosnahan was just cleaning up house every time that they would just be nominated for stuff. I was like, man, really? Like, is it that good? But uh, season one was really good. Th- that's the consensus I've always been hearing. It's like definitely season one's good. This show I actually have watched, and it's surprise. It's actually really good considering the cast. Uh, they just renewed to season three too. For what? Only Mur- uh, Ms. Maisel or only murders in the building? Only murders. In the building. Yeah. So only murders in the building is the next up on the list. Uh, yeah, that cast, Martin Short, um, Steve Martin, and Selena Gomez. Selena Gomez just just really is elevated by having those two guys around her. It's insane. It's so good. Um, fun murder mystery, a lot of fun comedy. Um, but then you have my darling, my personal favorite, <laughs> which is Ted Lasso. I think it's that's been all my our that's been my therapy for, for like a long time. I think I've rewatched the show probably three times. Uh, and then another good favorite of mine, which I'm finally glad it's nominated for for this uh, category is again is is what we do in the shadows that's on fx if you haven't seen it yet you got to watch it it's freaking hilarious um i hear good things yeah and so yeah this is a stacked like there's eight ca- nominees this is that's a lot the comedy so, one is, is a good list. yeah any of these honestly can win um it's just can just go ahead and, and take it it's they're all like it's one of those you know you hear people like oh it's always been an honor to just be nominated like this this is one of those categories like yeah it's an honor to be nominated because all of these are are complete like uh watch watchable like worth to watch top tier uh style of TV. I mean on this uh we have a the official uh, PDF ballot from the Emmys, but here on this list it tells you previous wins to date based on all categories. Mm-hmm. And the marvelous Miss Maisel is Damn. destroying everyone else with twenty wins. It has to date sixty six nominations and twenty wins. Ted Lasso has forty, but there's it's only been, there's only been one season of Ted Lasso. Yeah, it has forty nominations well, and two, seven two wins. Two by this point. Well, yeah. this one now the, it's, this is the only the second, the second season, season. But yeah. those forty nominations well, yeah, were only for 20. one yeah. for like one season. Uh, Curb over like what ten seasons? Eleven. 11 or 12. 11 has now? 51. Like 51. Um, with two wins. That's and, a shame. Yeah. It's, uh, and then, of course, you know, first season for Only Murders in the Building has 17. What We Do in the Shadows uh, has a total of like 17 at least, which is good. Again, um, that's a, solid, my low-key favorite. But um, I don't know if you guys have any other opinions. I'd, I'd love to hear what you guys think about this one, what you guys have seen, or just, you know, what, what a pick would be really quick. Yeah. Ted Lasso. Ted Lasso. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's tough. <laughs> it's but, tough, dude. But I, I only, I've only seen a couple. I've seen Barry, Curb, um, and Ted Lasso. I, I haven't seen the most recent season of Maisel. Yeah. So I'm just going to say Ted Lasso because it <laughs> won everything last year and it's an excellent show. It, it's, it's so. It's well a done. great feel good show. Just, yeah. It's also funny. Yeah. It's like funny feel good, whereas others are sometimes funny and very dark and Yeah, it deals dramaties. with stuff. I, I still like go, Barry. Like Barry's yeah. sometimes funny, but it's more of a drama. Yeah. At this point now it's yeah, definitely yeah. more of a drama. Which is just how like Yeah, this season was crazy. Crazy. out of hand. Um so next we're gonna move on to a television movies just because <laughs> uh the nominees are pretty wild. Wild. So you have uh Zoe's Extraordinary Christmas, which airs on Roku. Um, you what? have Reno 911, <laughs> The Hunt for QAnon on Paramount Plus. Ray Donovan, the movie, which got a movie to close out. I think it's a show. Uh, that's on Showtime. You have The Survivor, which is on HBO. That's starring, I think, Ben Foster. Uh, pretty good, heavy. This one I, I know of. I there's a little research into it, and that's on my on another like watch list because good like semi historical drama boxing movie too. So. Those are always usually good. And then lastly, on Disney Plus, has Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers. What uh, a nomination. What a, what a nomination. That's It's really... If you talk about an, an eclectic bunch, that's where you have your eclectic bunch. I mean, it's the only one I've seen, but I'm like, did it really need to get nominated? It's it's weird because, because it's a TV movie. So. It's a TV yeah. movie, I guess because there, aren't, there, weren't there weren't that, that many, many and yeah. probably not that many good ones. So like, yeah. Like might I think well. the survivor, maybe Ray Donovan might win, but or or the, it's either those two, but it's like clearly gonna be Zoe's extraordinary no, Christmas. No, it's not. Come on, <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> that show is awesome. Although my sister loves that show, it's no, it's not. No, no. Um, if Chip and Dale actually wins, that's gonna be hilarious. Like that. That's just let's put it on record. 
I want it to win. I don't think it will win, but if it does... It's because of the cameos. It's because of all the cameos. <laughs> and Seth Rogen. Seth Rogen. I need to watch it. It's really goofy. You gotta watch it. It's really funny. Yeah. Just watch I'll it for the nomination down. alone. Yeah. Uh, so next, this this uh, next category is fun. So lead actress in a drama series. This is um one of those where like it's just a like free for all battle royale. Anything goes. Could anyone can win this. Uh, Jodie Cormer, who is always great on Killing Eve. Laura Linney from Ozark. Melanie Linsky on Yellow Jackets. Sandra O oh also on Killing Eve. Reese Witherspoon on The Morning Show. Uh, Zendaya on Euphoria. Uh, that is your six nominees. Yes. Anthony, I think, pretty sure can make a strong case for Zendaya on Euphoria. For sure. Might get Zendaya. Sure. Yeah. Like she's, I didn't I, see season one, but I saw season two. Okay. Well, <laughs> I mean, she was good yeah. in both, but that that one episode in season two where it was just like all about her. I mean, yeah. the whole, she's the main character. No, yeah. but, she just, but there was one episode where she just like, is it like went a, off. Is it like a crazy. run Lola run thing? It was just a give me my Emmy please episode. That's what it was. <laughs> Those are always fun. Yeah. Um, I feel like Jodie Cormer has that in every episode in Killing Eve. <laughs> like from from the, the clips and things I see, it's like she's so intense. She's so good. I also Sandra Oh. Like they, they just like that. That's that, it's always like a, it sucks that they're always like nominated together. against. Yeah, together. Yeah. So like they're almost competing, but uh, they're really good. Um, again, I've seen the morning show. I'm caught up with it. Me and too. Reese Witherspoon uh, really good, stepped but... up. Yeah, this season, they gave her character more to do. She got a lot going on. But I, my personal pick is Laura Linney. Like, she... Yeah, she's awesome. It was n insane. So much range in Ozark. She's so good. And um, and I, I honestly, Laura Linney, I don't think would, would be as strong of an actress if she didn't cut her chops on a wonderful movie from the 90s called Congo. <laughs> that's going to be on my list. Of <laughs> no, that's mine. Movies to not pop. <laughs> no, that's a movie to pop because it's so oh, bad. It's God. good. Uh, so, yeah, Laura, that's the first thing I've ever seen Laura Linney in was Congo, uh, which is a, a great early. It's like a Terabad 90s movie. Uh, no, you was, like it. You, you think I, it's I like, a good movie. I think it's fun. I think it's it's really not fun. great, but it's it's fun. It's enjoyable to me. But uh, it was one like, hey, Jurassic Park came out. It's awesome. Let's do more Michael Crichton stuff. And then Congo happened, and they were like, what the hell is this? What is going on? Killer apes and whatever. Pretty Amy. Amy, good girl. And then uh, <laughs> Mr. Hamolka, stop eating my sesame cake. It's the best. Dude. That's the best. Don't Tim watch, Curry. Zach, don't watch it. No, watch it. Tim Curry. <laughs> For Tim Curry alone, you need to watch that movie. I'm getting Harold conflicted. Kummer, Hamolka. I'm getting conflicted. Uh, that means you have here. to watch I'm it. giving you the eyes. Anyway, Laura Linney, that's my pick. Anyone else? We'll, we'll have to chime in right quick. Uh, wait, wait. She'd, no be my, she'd be my number two. I Your number only, one is Zendaya? I've, yeah, I think I've Zendaya only watched has got it. The morning show on this list, but even then, I don't know. Season two wasn't think, as good as. I don't think as a whole season two is as good as season one, and I think that's partially you know the, and, the COVID yeah. stuff. And well, I, haven't even, I haven't even finished season two, which is odd. I watched like half the episodes. <laughs> yeah, that's why. Like some stuff is like kind of eh. like yeah, the first four or five episodes I watched, and then yeah. I hadn't but some of the performances finished. are good. Yeah, yeah, yeah I like the performances, but I don't know if from what I've been hearing from other you know from other friends and stuff that mm -hmm. Euphoria has been like this. You know, yeah. crazy great show maybe maybe zendaya might win she's she's a, honestly it's it's between her and laura linney in my book even though all of them can win it like out of nowhere but it's going to be honestly between zendaya and laura linney easy danny nice. uh i had my thoughts on zendaya all right yeah it's zendaya makes sense cool all right so we did lead actress let's do lead actor um uh, danny you want to read those down yeah so we got jason bateman from ozark Yep. We got Brian Cox in Succession. Lee Jung Jae from Squid Game. That's the main character, by the way. Nice. Bob Odenkirk, Better Call Saul. Adam Scott, Severance. Also nice. And Jeremy Strong, Succession. Also nice. I'm kind of. This is a. This is another slobber knocker. I'm, yeah. Bless yeah. you. But yeah. I'm, I'm also kind of like wondering why uh, Jason Sudeikis wouldn't be there. 
Because he's a well, comedy. He's in the comedy. 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 comedy, not Never drama. Mind. Never mind. Yeah, the Emmy split it up that way. I, strange. I just like totally forgot the category. But he's he's so good that he should just bleed into the drama too. Because the last one does get serious in the dramatic moments. Yeah, he's really good. Yeah, second season. That second season happens. So disregard everything that I just said. We'll rewind. Either way. All right. So yes, that like Anthony said, this is stacked. Bob Odenkirk. He's so good. So good. Um, you got very Adam memorable. Scott in Severance, too. I know deep down, Brian Cox is going to win it. Yeah, I think he's been yeah. winning, too. He just, keeps, so. he just keeps scooping it up. But Adam Scott is basically playing two people on this show. <laughs> That's true. And it's so good. And it's great because, you, you, I mean, everybody knows him. He was, he was in Party Down, right? Yeah. Yeah. So everyone knows Party Down, Parks and Rec, Step Brothers, but Boy he Meets is... World. Damn, that is a throwback. But this man really like stepped his game up to the cr- crazy top tier level in Severance. Yeah. That dude is. He just so got good. Um, announced to be in the new Madam Web movie for Sony. <laughs> uh, sure. <laughs> Which that cast is. That cast is going to be all over the place, but I mean. He could. He's really cutting his chops, and I, you know Ben Stiller helped get a really amazing performance out of Adam Scott, oh, and sure. so that's my pick is Adam Scott. Like you know, not that I'm biased for Severance because <laughs> that show just is so like again. I just really get the Mr. Robot vibes for it, and I just I love it. But you know, I've seen, I've just I just finished Ozark. Jason Bateman's great, but I think he's I feel more bad, man because he's, he's been better. great the whole show. Yeah, but it's just. There's also amazing stuff going on. He's also directing, so it's like, no. is he's like double duty. Uh, Lee Jung Jae has has some great depth to the things that's going on in Squid Game, um, but then you have again like freaking just uh, I gotta I'm gonna start watching it now. So Bob Odenkirk and Better Call Saul just it's only rave reviews I hear. Yeah, and he was great in Nobody. I mean, so he knows he's he's just good. He's at the all best in Nobody. He's so good. Yeah, um, yeah. I'll let I Anthony mean, always sing his praises, but that dude, whew, yeah, so good. I mean, I'll probably say Brian Cox just because he's been winning, but I want Bob Bodenkirk to win, just cause. Nice. It's all good, man. It's all good, man. <laughs> Zach, any picks? Just a just an educated guess. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's Lee Jung Jae. Uh, Ted Lasso. Ted Lasso. <laughs> he's like Ted Lasso. <laughs> Eeny meeny. Just close your eyes and pick. Odenkirk. There you go. Good for you. Okay. Good pick. He's the only name that I, or he's the only person on there that I actually like the most out of all those. Yeah. Nice. That's it. That's my. That's my pick. Uh, that's the reason why. I Word. That pick. <laughs> all right. Right on. They're watching. All right. So this one, this is a. Uh, this is the another one that is low key really stacked. So you have lead actress in a comedy series. So uh, Marvelous Miss Maisel. So Rachel Rachel Brosnahan yes. is just in the past just cleaning up. But now we have uh, Quinta Brunson, who I believe co-wrote Abbott Elementary, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, Yeah, also nominated in writing. Yeah, she's insanely good from the little clips and everything I see. Uh, Kaylee Cuoco and The Flight Attendant, which I know people who have seen it, and they're surprised because everybody knows her from Big Bang Theory and um, I despise that show, but Kaylee Cuoco has been killing it with, with the flight attendant and with Harley Quinn on both on HBO Max. So, Ellie uh, Cat Strike, Disney Plus. Oh, man, wow, another deep cut. Do 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 deep cuts. <laughs> so I have a good friend of mine who's seen uh, The Great, and uh, Elle Fanning is really just d- delivering some next level stuff on there. Issa Rae has been getting recognized for the past few years doing some. Uh, stuff all over the place, but it, her show Insecure has always been great. And then you have who won, I think, last year was Jean Smart for Hacks, right? I believe so. Yeah. She's, she's too good. Yeah, she's, Jean Smart she's is She's usually good. good in whatever she does. Yeah, you can't, like, not knock it. Wasn't she? Oh, she was in Watchmen. Yeah, like, mm-hmm. she's so good in that. Like, it's so it's it's tough, man. Like, my... Fargo. Damn. I haven't seen most of these i've seen a little bit of the flight attendant while it's on because i had some family that were watching it when they were over oh right on um but they have taste good for them <laughs> but i my guess will probably be gene smart 
I've yeah. just heard a lot about Pax and her. So Yeah, the strong guess is going to be Jean Smart, but I think because of just how new and fresh it is, I think Quinta Brunson might steal it. If not, it's going to be Rachel Brosnahan because it's Marvis was Maisel. It's yeah. like, it was like whenever, remember in the last Emmys, like, like many years ago, like every time Big Bang Theory showed up, they're just like, Big Bang Theory. And they kept giving it awards, even though they really shouldn't have because that show was trash. Uh, but hey, that's like Jim Parsons. Hey, here's an award, Jim Parsons. Again, not knocking Jim Parsons, but they're just like, we're just going to discount everything else because Jim Parsons. Yep. I'm annoyed about Big that. Big Bang. Big Bang. <sighs> anyway, Anthony, any pick on this one? I'll probably go with Rachel Brosnahan. Yeah. <laughs> Just because that's the only show I really watched on this list. All right. Makes sense. That makes and sense. I know she's good. And then uh, lastly, Zach. She's marvelous. She is uh, marvelous. Hey, Ms. Maisel, <laughs> you're marvelous. Uh, anything on your end that you're just like, yeah, just going to take a stab at? Uh, uh, Diver. So total educated guess, Gene Smart. <laughs> you know what? That's a smart that choice. That is a smart choice. We got the puns up in here. All right, Anthony, I'm gonna let Anthony uh take this this the category because this is he, you're, this is you're rough. excited for this one. This is rough because it's so good. It's not fair. No, it isn't. <laughs> so this is lead actor in a comedy series. Donald Glover, aka Childish Gambino. AKA Troy Barnes. That's for real. Um go watch community. That's double pops. Pop pop. Okay, so Magnitude? Donald Glover for Atlanta. Um, Bill Hader for Barry. Nicholas Holt for The Great. Steve Martin, only murders in the building. Martin Short, only murders in the building. Not fair. <laughs> Jason Sudeikis, Ted Lasso. So Ooh. as much as I love Jason Sudeikis and Ted Lasso, this category is also stacked. This it's is stacked. really this hard. Close. This is any, like, honestly... With the ex maybe the small exception of Nicholas Holt, because although he does some really crazy stuff as uh, the Russian Emperor, like I like I've seen only murders in the building, Barry, Atlanta, and Ted Lasso. It could really go to any one of those four. Like my personal pick is Ted Lasso because of the range that was that that, that was shown in there, but Bill Hader dude is nuts on Barry, dude. and then Donald Glover has, I like the. It's hard because this season is is kind of tricky, but it's still like a showcase of what Donald D Glover does with this kind of like surrealist style that shows up in Atlanta. Like if you, again, if you haven't seen Atlanta, you gotta watch it. Like it's just it's hard to describe Atlanta other than just just watch Atlanta because it's that good. <laughs> but it's for me if I really had to, even though you have comedy greats and Steve Martin and Martin Sh uh, Martin Short, so Steve Martin Short. Uh, it's a th <laughs> honestly like if I I'm gonna cheat. It's a three way tie between Jason Sudeikis, Bill Hader, and Donald Glover. Like it's, three way tie. It, it's that's it's too hard. Like my heart of hearts got to go to Ted Lasso, but go, I would be happy if Donald Glover or Bill Hader uh, squeak out with the win. All right, so heart of hearts, Ted Lasso. Danny? Yep. Uh, Ted Lasso. Ted Lasso. Boys, yeah, exactly. we're boys. Yeah, Jason Sudeikis. Nice. All right. I'm, Anthony's like, I'm, I think I'm going to go Bill Hader. Bill Hader, right? Dude, he was... I'm not mad. Excellent this season. I am not mad. Dude, that episode seven, that the whole like sequence and stuff on the beach. The chase? And the chase. He directed that one. Yeah, he did. Dude, that episode is nuts. The, 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 the car dealership thing, I'm just like, what the well, hell am I watching? Like, he, he also got nominated for writing and directing Barry. Yeah. He's, he's also he's in a creator of the show. He's also a guest actor in a comedy series. There's the one yeah. episode of Curb. <laughs> he's... Three guys, or Larry thinks it's just one guy <laughs> that works in three different. It shops. works in three different shops, and they just <laughs> so <laughs> stupid. So, but it's, so most likely, the gag is great. Jason Sudeikis runs away with it. But yeah, I'm gonna go. With I don't Bill. know about run away. No, he doesn't run away. With I'm it. gonna go with Bill Hader. Yeah, I don't think he runs away with it. He's he he, he wins it, but it's gonna it's a close. One. I have not seen Only Murders in the Building yet, so I mean, I love both those guys. They're awesome but, in the show. Like they're just Martin Short is particularly like if had to give it one over the other. He's just, I think Martin short over it, but Steve Martin, just all his Brazos references are so good. Brazos. Man. Oh, it's going to be hard. All That's right, a hard So category. what's the next category? Lead actress? Oh, uh, do we want to do uh, the limited anthology series? I think, I think lead actress would be like, yeah, the lead actor in limited series. 
uh, let's go with sorry, lead actress in limited series because those those two are pretty hype. Um, in the sense that you have Tony Collette, who's amazing. Uh, she's in the Staircase on HBO Max. Uh, Julia Garner, who's famous for Ozark, she's on that invent uh, that limited mm -hmm. series Inventing Anna on Netflix. The one with the really fun accent. That one. <laughs> uh, Lily James and Pam and Tommy, which really blew up. I didn't think it would be like that big, but it's there. Uh, Sarah Paulson, who just for American Horror Story would just collect awards. She just rolled up. Hey, it's mine now. <laughs> uh, Margaret Qualley on Made, who which is also on Netflix, is really good. Uh, I know Margaret Qualley from uh, what's Leftovers. Show? Leftovers and um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. That's right. Yeah. And then lastly, um, which is a, this is a really good limited series. I recommend watching it, which is called The Dropout on Hulu. Uh, Amanda Seyfried. Which I saw. Cool. Yeah. So is it good? It's good. Yeah, it's good. Like that's, she she carries the show, I think. She's going to be my pick. Yeah. That's mm. yeah. That's a good one. My pick um possible Sue Storm. Possibly. <sighs> With these rumors. We'll see. We'll see. Well, I think everyone's a rumor at this point. <laughs> I'm fantastic. I'm no. Johnny Storm. I haven't heard like Margot Robbie yes, who's They're going to or... they're going to uh dye my hair blonde and I'm Johnny Storm. <laughs> well, that's it. It's easy. There's Jason Segel as, uh, as that's the thing. thing. As Ben Grimm. So, anyway, <laughs> my pick, honestly, <laughs> based off of their pedigree and just the fact that whenever this person is on screen, uh, she's too good. She's just completely magnetic. She just takes over and brings so much layers and depth to her characters. Sarah Paulson. Easy. Sarah Paulson. Nice. Yeah, that's my pick. Anthony? Uh, I'm going to do the same because that's the only one of these that I've seen. And she was great in it. Yeah. Cool. Did not know it was her for a while. I'm like, oh wow, that is her. Okay. Yep, <laughs> very good makeup. Oh makeup my 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 secondary pick is Amanda Seyfried for the the dropout. Cool. Uh, Danny picked Amanda Seyfried. Zach, I'm assuming you've seen none of these. You are correct. Awesome. <laughs> so just pick. He's like Sarah Paulson. What's your favorite name? You know, I, I might just <laughs> go Sarah Paulson. <laughs> I might just go Sarah Paulson. I'm just going based off of total nominations. He's like, total <laughs> nominations of how good they are. Okay. Yeah, fair okay. enough. Nice. Yeah, that character. Yeah, that person's in there. Good, good. Uh, lead actor in limited anthology series. I'm going to roll through these really quick. Colin Firth in The Staircase. Uh, it's basically a weird, Ooh. like, weird exactly. murder accident crime mystery thing. It's pretty good. Did someone Some die? Yeah, yeah, someone yeah. dies in the staircase and they're just like, how do we cover this up? We got to cover the story. Very literal. Literal. Yeah. Uh, Andrew Garfield in Under the Banner of Heaven. Really heavy, like, murder mystery. He plays a detective. Uh, Oscar Isaac in Scenes from a Marriage. Mm. Michael Keaton in Dope Sick. Himesh Patel in Station Eleven, which low-key, like, really, like, under the radar, but Station Eleven apparently is insanely good. And then Sebastian Stan for Pan and Tommy, where he plays uh, Tommy Lee. The famed uh, drummer from Mott La Crew. Um, this guy, this one, really quickly, my pick is Oscar Isaac in Scenes from America. I'm a little surprised that Oscar Isaac isn't nominated for Moon Knight. I, is it a limited series? Well, it's, technically, but he's it not is. anywhere on this list. No. So uh, even if it was, it's not on this category. No. I mean, Moon Knight got nominated for a bunch of stuff. Right. A bunch of stunt but, stuff. But, yeah. And, like, but and music, I think yeah. the best part the of that show was, don't was him. Much. Hey, music matters. But, yeah, that's fine. Music matters in here. But uh, yeah, dude. Um, yeah, my pick is Oscar Isaac because um, he's your that, boy. That's my boy. But also, scenes from a marriage is it's a really strong showcase of his skills as well. Uh, secondary pick. As much as I want to pick Andrew Garfield, because he, he that show he carries that show, hands down. But Michael Keaton and Dope Sick is as type of an ensemble cast. Like he really stands out as, um as like a real focal point for everything that's going on with the whole like um you know like uh opioid crisis that they uh that the, the whole show's about really really good so good um I'll, I'll leave the floor to you guys if not we move on danny I haven't seen any so i'm just gonna do a zach and pick <laughs> andrew garfield cool right on zach i i do <laughs> like five of these six i don't know who the hell patel is Wow. Um, I'm just going to go based <laughs> off of the name that I like the most. And I think I'm going to go with Colin Firth. Colin okay. Firth. It's the Oscar winner in there. So, Colin Firth. So I also haven't watched any of these. 
but coming what, from the professional popcorn watch list. But what I what I do see <laughs> is I see Spider Man, Moon Knight, Bat- <laughs> Batman, and the Winter, the Winter Soldier. Soldier. So. <laughs> Do, Wait, do, what you about see, the Vulture? do you see the Kingsman? You see Kingsman? Well, he, he's Batman before Vulture. Okay. So. Yeah, and you have uh, uh, yeah, the Kingsman. It's Galahad. Yeah. Yeah. You have Galahad. <laughs> and I don't know who Patel is. <laughs> <laughs> so messed up. <laughs> I'm already saying that. Man, I, if I Mesh Patel ever hears, I know like, Def Patel. Actually, I, I have heard. I have seen something with him in it. I know Def Patel. <laughs> I don't yes, know. Yes, I know no, man. Patel, like, um, I'm just gonna pick. Oh, isn't he in um? I'll pick Sebastian Stan just because I remember watching the trailers for that show and both him and he was Lily Tenet. James looked just yeah. like and, um, like Pam uh, Pam and Tommy. So oh yeah, this guy's in Avenue uh, Himesh Patel's in Avenue Five. That's also that's a fun little show on Netflix. I'm um, the HBO. Sorry. So Winter, Winter Soldier. Soldier. Also because that's one of my favorite Marvel <laughs> movies. Winter Soldier. Yeah. Yeah. Who's the main guy in yesterday? Yeah, he was the main guy yesterday. I knew, I knew, I recognized his name. Oh, that guy! That guy. You don't know <laughs> Patel? No, 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 no! You can't take it back. You, <laughs> you don't know him. That's you Himesh Patel. Patel. Yes, because okay, because the guy from Tenet that helped them with the plane. <laughs> the plane. Because oh. as soon as you said, as soon as you said yesterday, I'm like, wait, that's that Beatles movie where no one now knew about I remember the Beatles. The guy. Him. Yeah. Yes, okay. excellent. And don't I mean, I don't remember his face, but I remember him being in the movie. Mm-hmm. Yep. No, you don't know who he is. <laughs> I don't. No, I don't. It's like, but no, no, no. I All think right. before yesterday. The movie. I know no <laughs> <people else. laughs> and now you know. Today. Retraction. Excellent. All right. All right next category. Next you category. Buy these next ones. So supporting actress in a drama series. Uh, another stacked one. Uh, you have Patricia Arquette for Severance. Nice. Miss Coble. Uh, uh, Julia Garner nice. for Ozark. This Ruth, the powerhouse Ruth, so good. Uh, Jung Ho Young in Squid Game. Uh, Christina Ricci in Yellow Jackets. Uh. Rhea Seahorn, Better Call Saul, oh. Jay Smith Cameron in Succession, Sarah Snook in Succession, and Sydney Sweeney from mm, Euphoria. Nice. This is a tough one. That is a tough one. But uh, my pick, even though I've seen a few of these, so as good as Julia, again, as good as Julia Gardner is, uh, Jung Ho Young like, really blew up because of Squid Game, but um, my pick is Patricia Arquette in Severance. Like, just Patricia Arquette has just been a, a killer. Uh, just with every, everything she's shown up with lately and all the dramas, she's just a stone cold killer. Like all the characters she plays are just, it's, it's a master class in acting from Patricia Arquette. Like, um, I really hope she, she takes this one because, uh, that character is out of hand. Like Miss Coble is just, just, you, just watch Severance. Yeah. That's just the moral of the stories. Watch Severance. And also Better Call Saul. But, uh, Anthony, I know has, a. Might have this a pick. Is tough. Yeah, but I want to hear his thoughts. Julie Garner is very good in Ozark. Yup. Is this this also might be Ozark Part One of the final season? Is it? By the way, yeah, because Part Two came out like in a April few weeks ago. Yeah, but it was in April. No, Part Two came out a few weeks ago. No. I'll, yeah. No, Part Two came out a little while back. Are you sure? Maybe. Yeah. May, maybe I'm just confused as to when <laughs> I watched it. <laughs> yeah, because that's be, came out April 29th. All right. So it's it's the whole season. Okay. Yeah, it's it's the the whole thing there. So. All right. So, but yeah, she's excellent. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna have to go with Ray Seahorn because yeah, she's a brand new character of this show that you think is just gonna be about Saul Goodman, and she's just as good as as Odin Kirk. So Ooh. she's great. Yeah, I was but, hearing a thing on NPR, and they were just talking about, especially this season. Just, just she's yeah, her evolution so has been great. Cause yeah, at the beginning, she's just like this standard lawyer character and then she just evolves after like season two or three and it's yeah she's been excellent yep that's awesome uh danny um when you go with jung from squid games ah Ooh. good Ooh. pick yeah yeah, good job, great. Man. yeah she, she was insanely <laughs> good that was the uh, again zach watch squid game <laughs> <laughs> yeah like it's and there was snook your pick This is tough. Throwing a name out there, Seahorn. Seahorn. Ooh. Ooh. That Cindy Sweeney. That, I don't it. know who that is. <laughs> He's like she's I, gonna be in Madam Web. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, okay, okay, yeah. Because cool. Euphoria might, is one of the shows that she I might end like up being black. I just want to avoid. She might be uh, that. I can see that. Right? Yeah. Oh, they're not gonna bring back. Uh, what's her name for? Uh, no. Back. Felicia Hart. No, uh, uh, Felicity Jones. Felicity Jones. Yeah, no, they're I not bringing her back. 
All right, cool. That's the gar- <laughs> that's the, the the amazing verse. So it's not gonna happen. Um, if Christina Ricci squeaks it out, the win. Uh, I would I'd be happy. It. I'll allow it. I'll be yeah. really happy for. Her. Uh, but honestly, it's my it's between. Uh, it might. I don't know. Like because Succession might just take it again. But Patricia Arquette. They have two of them. Yeah, two Succession. But again, Patricia Arquette. Last when she, when they were doing Escape at Danamora, like she she cleaned up, like that 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 limited series cleaned up. She so good. she's stepping up again. Yeah, that she good, very very good. Is she related to David Arquette? Yes. Okay. Uh, supporting. Uh, all right, supporting actor in a drama series. We, we just a supporting actress. This is another uh rough one and tough, rough and tough one because full they're all good. Full of severance and full of full of succession too. Full of yeah, two successions. Sorry, three successions, two severance, and two Squid Game. And you sneak in a Billy Crudup from the morning show. So you have <laughs> Billy Crudup from the morning show, which he did extremely well. Like that character is just oh, like as Anthony calls like the walking bone saw machine. Like they're always just. He was great in season one. Yeah, he's great in season two. Like of, it's consistently great. Yeah, uh, Nicholas Braun in Succession. Uh, Kieran Culkin in Succession is really good too. <laughs> Billy, I just mentioned Billy really Crudup. Succession, <laughs> right? Park Hae Su in Squid Games. Uh, Matthew McFadden also in Succession. But then we have John Turturro and Christopher Walken from Severance. Ooh. And then this is what my personal pick is Oh Young Soo from Squid Game. He's number one. Oh. That's that's my personal pick. Uh, as much that, as I want John Turturro to win it. I was going to say John Turturro, but now that you mentioned that he's number the one. The guy who's uh, number one, I yeah, like that, that's, that could really win it. And that could really just blow it up and, you know, just open the doors for really um, – a wide range of performances and acting, even just in different languages. He's, as you guys, the three of us who've seen it, it's, he's so good. Mm. He's great. He's so good. Very good. Um, Danny, I know, like, that, I kind of just screwed you it. up your pick, yeah. didn't I? <laughs> my my secondary pick is um, uh, John Tutor- is John Turturro, I think. But yeah. I think Heart of Hearts is like, if Oh Young Soo wins, I'll be happy. But it could be because of how like strong Severance is, like any one of those, uh, either of those two wins. Succession, I feel. Yeah, have a- maybe. Yeah, I'm gonna pick Karen Culkin because there's three Succession people. Yeah, he's <laughs> like, I just need one. One of them has to win, and yeah. I haven't seen it, but it's I'm pro- assuming they're all. He's good. really good from yeah. the clips I've seen. Like they're just like, hey, when I, he's on like like late night shows and he comes in and they they play a clip, I'm just like, what the? Sh-? He's really freaking good. Or like they'll give him something for his character to do, and you're just like, I'm blown away. It's so good. Zach, <laughs> do it. Just say Christopher Walken. Your your answer is Christopher Walken. Well, because I I liked uh, Billy Crudup's uh, performance. This is for season two, though. For se- yeah, for, well, yeah, yeah. He's seen parts of season two, so okay. he has yeah. an educate. He has an opinion here. Right? Yeah, I, I watched the first four or five episodes. Uh, I think he his performance here is even more out there compared to season one. Yeah, for the most part, makes sense. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, but that's the only performance I've seen of these actors, so I'm just gonna have to stick with him. Do it, <laughs> yeah. By, Good choice. By, by default, it. like yep. that's that's my choice. Nice. All right, I'm gonna uh, we're gonna try to wrap these up with uh, supporting actor, actress, and actor in a comedy series. Um, this one is really tough. This is another tough one. So you have Alex Borstein from The Marvelous Miss Maisel, which she has won in the past, I believe. Uh, Hannah Einbender from Hacks, uh, who was, I think, won something recently, but, uh, for it, uh, Janelle James in Abbott Elementary, Kate McKinnon on SNL, I think it's, it's her last season as well, so, uh, it'd be great for her to, like, uh, close it out with a win, and then here's where, uh, <laughs> it gets also wild, so you have Sarah Niles from Ted Lasso, she plays Dr. Sharon, uh, Cheryl Lee Ralph, also in Abbott Elementary, you have Juno Temple, uh, who plays uh, Keely Jones and Hannah Waddingham, who is Rebecca Welton on Ted Lasso. Um, Hannah Waddingham won last year for the same character. So let her win again. Yep. Because yeah. I think she's going to win. She's saying, um, spoiler alert, um, there was a Rick roll in this season and uh, it was initiated by her. So it should win. Just for the Rick Rolo. No, I'm kidding. That character also went through a whole ringer Up and of down. stuff. Yeah. yeah, it's hard because everybody on Ted Lasso, even like Keeley, like Juno Temple, like just has the a, second like a lot season going on. especially. They gave her because of her like relationship with Roy. Like there's yeah. so much layers and dynamics that and was Sarah Niles as the Doctor was. Yeah, that, as injecting a new character much. into it, like it was. She's so good, and 
you know, I, I don't think she's coming back. I, she may or may not come back for the last season. So it would be great to just be like a one and done. She came in yeah. like her impact was immediate on like almost the entire <laughs> character roster in that show. So I think if you're able to do that and showcase the impact that character has and just like be able just, to act it out, you just come for a couple episodes and you get nominated and just and, and you wreck it. That's it. <laughs> she got to wreck it. So, uh, my my uh, I, I, it's hard because I want to split the I I would say Hannah Waddingham, just but then one. Just Hannah one. Hannah Waddingham, uh, secondary pick is Sarah Niles, and third is Juno Temple. <laughs> really and again because they're so close fourth would probably go to <laughs> hannah einbender okay for hacks all right danny uh hannah Waddingham. nice nice Zach. Zacharino. I, think, I think temple she's hilarious nice all right nice <laughs> all right Quite excellent good. uh sporting actor in a comedy series this is i'm mad I'm. I want to like oh, this easy. Is too, no, it's not. You're insane. <laughs> okay, for if you me, think, it's easy. You're insane you if you think this Barry. category. You watch Barry. <laughs> um, Anthony Kerrigan as Barry, probably one of the best side characters in all of television. No ho Hank, dude. <laughs> dude just <laughs> that guy is hilarious. <laughs> no ho Hank is amazing. They're uh, probably gonna be split. But... Brett Goldstein as Roy Kent. Mm -hmm. Toheeb Jimo as Sam Obasanya. Oh, I love him. Uh, Nick Mohammed as Nate the Great. Maybe not so great oh, if you gosh. watch all this, the season two. But that's uh, why he's nominated because he's good. He's that good. He is Tony good. Shalhoub in Marvelous Ms. Maisel. Tyler James Williams from Abbott Elementary. Henry Winkler in Barry. And then Bowen Yang in SNL. Uh, this this is all really strong. Like it, my my tally list is just basically like all three from Ted Lasso and then Barry. And I'm just like, question mark? Like, I can't pick. I, I, I'll let you guys pick first before I really cement mine because this is hard. Uh, uh, Zach, you go first because you said it was an easy pick for you. Yeah, go, uh, Roy, Kent. Mm. Roy, Roy Kent. Roy Kent. Brett Goldstein? No, no, for him. Oh, I, I'm going to pick Anthony Kerrigan because his name is Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, not, he's, not because he's, of, no. he's awesome in that show. Yeah, dude, Noho Hank is... One of the wildest um, and craziest. Hi, buddy. <laughs> Hello, buddy. He's like the uh, what is? What did he say? Uh, what did he, calling him as an assassin? He's like the Greek. Uh, he's like the he's like the Greek freak of assassins. Like, and his accent apparently is so ridiculous. A fun fun side story. Anthony Kerrigan modeled a lot of the NoHo Hank mannerisms out of like a Genius Bar employee from an Apple store, like in L.A. <laughs> um, this is nuts. Like, it is, dude. He's so good. Dan and Danny, what's your pick? While he's, he's so looking, uh, I'm gonna pick um, Tohib from Ted Lasso. Sam Obasanya. Sam Obasanya nice. was probably one of my favorite characters of season two. Yeah, uh, they, he really they got a lot to. Him a lot, yeah. He got a lot to do in this one. He and, was so good, and he's just funny. Pun intended. He was so good. Like just damn. I, I think um Roy Kent was better in season one, but um Roy Kent is Roy Kent, so it's too good. <sighs> it it it's hard. Yeah, yes and no. Like he still he had different things to do this season, but he was so good at it. It was like there was so yeah. much going on. But then it's great because now but again <laughs> I can't this, this... Pick. gotta pick one. Nick Mohammed. That's a wild pick, Ooh, but Nick Muhammad. We all picked a different Nick level. Muhammad. The wild card. Bare, just because if you rewatch season two, there's such a gradual small shift. There's small yeah. mannerisms, character. Like, there's just things that he does physically with the character. Um, not so much like the other, like, main thing. Obviously, the, the big important stuff he does. But, like, there's all these little small physical details that show the small, the, the sort of, like, evolution of... It builds uh, up. Nathan Shelley, it just builds up to that big focal point and, and uh, you know, breaking point at the, the end of Very season yeah. two. It's so good. But if I had to do a secondary pick, it's like, a, again, I can't. It's a three-way tie between everyone in Ted Lasso and Anthony Kerrigan. But if I had to pick one, it would be Nick Muhammad. I think he <laughs> deserves some recognition. But so does Anthony Kerrigan because it's been three seasons of Noho Hank delivering ridiculous, hilarious lines of just like, you know, just, he's just things like these guys they're like a seal team six huh maybe like a seven and a half like just <laughs> it's so ridiculous i, I want to read the next category he's like that's right then all right 
Hit the next, supporting hit the next actress one. in a limited or anthology. <laughs> Connie Britton, White Lotus. Jennifer Coolidge, <laughs> The White Lotus. <laughs> Alexandra Daddario, The White Lotus. Caitlin Deaver, not The White Lotus. <laughs> dope Sick. Actually Dope Sick. Natasha Rothwell, The White Lotus. Sydney Sweeney, The White Lotus. And then Mare Winningham, Dope Sick. So, yeah. I think White Lotus is going to win this category. <laughs> and I think Jennifer Coolidge wins it, actually. Okay. Because it just, it, it, that's a great, it's, that shows a platform. It just, it shows that, like, she's more than just, like, the other stereotyped uh, roles she's had in the past. Like, and, like, they were, it was a point where I think if I remember hearing from a story once that they offered her a role and she's like, she initially declined. She's like, I'm not good enough for this. And they told her, no, you are. We yeah. do it. Like, it's like, please, we want you. We can only see you doing it. And um, for all those who've seen it, it they just are complete in awe of just like how good Jennifer Coolidge. But that whole cast is, is a great ensemble cast. They're so they're really, really good. Uh, but that's my pick. Jennifer Coolidge. Anthony, I already Gotta know who's going to pick. So. Alexandra Daddario. Yep, you can't. Uh, I'll choose Sydney Sweeney because she was in Euphoria. Mm-hmm. Good call. And Zach, you're gonna pick Connie Britton. No, no just pick Dope Sick. Anyone that's in the White Lotus. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's like all White Lotus. I pick White Lotus. All the White Lotus. <laughs> it's funny because um uh if you go to supporting actor and and limiter anthology, no, it's the, the opposite. It's like no, it's oh, it's split three between three. three and three of Murray Bartlett White Lotus, Jake Lacey White Lotus, then Will Poulter in Dope Sick, um. Seth Rogen in Pam and Tommy, the, the, the outlier. Peter Sarsgaard in Dope Sick. Michael Stuhlbarg in Dope Sick. And then Steve Zahn for White Lotus. Nice. Um, my pick, because I feel that this dude is so good, even though he was criminally underutilized in Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness, Michael Stuhlbarg. Hmm. You mean that the one, the the one, one scene, scene he was in? <laughs> my brother and my cat were snapped. Um, I'm going with Murray Bartlett, White Lotus. He was pretty out of hand. Okay, okay. My secondary pick is Will Poulter. Because that boy, good. I was going to say Will. Yeah, Will Poulter. Cool. Good, good catch. Well, that's your primary pick, Adam right? Adam Warlock. Yeah. yeah, Adam Warlock. Yeah, dude. Zach? Um, Seth Rogen on there, but... I mean, I've seen Pam and Tommy. <laughs> but I don't know if that's... I don't know how everyone else is compared to him, so... I can't say. He's the catalyst for the video, man. It's great. I might say Poulter. I think Poulter. <laughs> okay. I think our cool. last one should be the, the theme song category. The, the theme song category? The, which yeah. I don't really see on my list. I can pull it up for yeah, you immediately. Yeah, we'll pull it up because it's not in that list. Okay, cool. Because I, uh, didn't I have it here? Hold up. Yeah, I got it. Outstanding original main theme music for 2022. Cool. I haven't seen it, so lay it on me. Oh, this is this is fun. Uh, you have the nominees, Only Murders in the Building. It's a fun, you know, this is coming from the guy who does not skip intros in his house. We don't skip. <laughs> we don't skip intros in my house. So you have Loki, Only Murders oh. in the Building, Severance, Squid Game, and The White Lotus. My thing is that, like, the Squid, Squid Game's theme is... It's short. It's kind of really short. It's just the little title sequence, and then, hey, here's the dumb game. White Lotus's theme is really... <laughs> cool it's really kooky it's cool um only murders in the building sets the tone perfectly for the entire show like it's like this fun but like you know interesting you know layered murder mystery um but honestly um my like if i'm eliminating top two is easy loki and severance like because the theme the, the opening theme for severance plays throughout the entire show same thing with loki um but it's just they're just so out there the both of them that um it it's they're just they're icon- they're almost fits, iconic well they both fit the show very well yeah i think if i were to if it objectively like from an like a the, the scholarly point of view severance <laughs> wins it but personally like fanboy style loki because it's just again how the opening title sequence and the music just sets you up for just how wild the show is it's perfect that that's my that if that would you be were perfect. told that you had to skip one of them <laughs> Which one would you skip? Would I skip? Yeah. I mean, I mean, both it's of those hard. Only, ask you to skip. Audio? <laughs> Are you talking? So it's only audio, right? Only audio, no visual. Only audio? No, I would it's skip both severance because you skip it when you're watching it. If I, if it's only the audio because it's it's original main theme music, yeah. I would skip severance because it's longer. 
Mm. Okay. Loki's is shorter and um Okay, so your I pick love is the Loki. Little, yeah. So my pick is Loki. Heart of hearts. But Severance is gonna probably win it. Interesting. Open it up to you guys. Danny. It's just the whole Loki theme is great. Remember, the theme know, song it's is just different. The theme song. And that's the TVA. Yeah. But song. I like that one. That I know one's it's great. good. But I, I like the end theme better. Yeah. Um I'll probably go for Severance. Ooh. You know, funny enough, they have an outstanding main title design for this exact category for the, the <laughs> beef. So check it out. So you have a, a Candy, Cowboy Bebop, because they're just lifting the anime one. So yeah, imagine if Cowboy Bebop... If imagine you... if Cowboy Bebop won. But then you have... But then you have... A, it's, it's wild because Apple TV Plus has four nominees in this. You have Foundation... Which Ooh. is pretty cool looking, Lysy sto- uh, Lysy story with um, uh, what's her name, uh, Julianne Moore, uh, only murders in the building, which is a cool sequence. Again, this is part of the we don't skip intros in this house. Um, I've mentioned it before. Everybody needs to watch Pachinko. The opening sequence is really cool. The song they use and the 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 the, the whole dancing sequence is awesome. But then you have Severance. Which I think Severance should win it hands down. The, just for the, the visuals animation alone and, and yeah, animation. this is for visuals alone and the creepiness. But so, you're so intrigued. Now, yep. now I'm even more disappointed that the Cowboy Bebop theme song isn't nominated, right? Because that, that would opening sequence that would that would instantly win. Yeah, it really would instantly win. That's very weird. Um, any other picks? Or are we all decided on Severance? Well, no, good not Severance. I, I was kind of One wondering something. Um. I heard that the Peacemaker intro was actually pretty. Oh, it's amazing! And I'm also it's mad. Not it's... No, it's not. Because because at first, <laughs> at first, Do I'm you like, really want to really want to taste it. Because <sighs> my, my thing was okay. I know that band is named the visual because the visual should be nominated. That's main title design. Yeah. Because yeah, I guess because it's just acted out in a dance. Like but, it's not designed. Like, oh, they designed. Uh, the, they the designed the dance, the choreography. <laughs> the band, that band of that song is called Wigwam. Mm-hmm. I, I, I can't. That always just makes me laugh. But Wigwam. Because the, re- the reason why I bring it up is because I thought the show came out before. Yeah. No, it's in the. It was in the, the time frame. Yeah, the time frame. No, because because I thought the show had come out early last year. No. Nope. Early for this some year. reason, early I thought it was early last year because I'm like, okay, did it miss? Or on was Thursdays. that the cutoff for last year's which Emmys? Is, or which is even worse. That's not it makes me sad. Yeah. Yeah, because because that was one of the things that came to mind about the theme songs. Even though I've never watched the show, I've heard that it has a great intro. Oh, just watch the intro. Yeah. I mean, the show's good, but watch if you don't want to watch the show, watch the intro. You, that's I, I, an I intro do you don't watch skip. The show. I do want to watch the show. I know people who do not, specifically do not skip the Peacemaker intro because of just how, like, hype and ridiculous it is so it, it does kind of surprise me that that wouldn't be on either of these lists john cena man just <laughs> everybody actually just that's the whole cast that's the whole cast is in that sequence it's so good anyway um yeah main title design i pick severance, severance. what's your yours is oh, severance title is design? design or it's, it's main title design that's the, uh, oh, what that about the other one we didn't finish the other the theme one. one for the 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 theme yeah the music for a, a show yeah yeah it was loki and for a series loki loki um, yeah, it, that's an opening. That, yeah, I, I, I'll just go with everyone else, Loki. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna go with White Lotus. Wow, way to be different. White no, Lotus, no, that's, that's that fair. Great. No, yeah, I like that. That's song. fair. That's a fair pick. Honestly, I'm cool with that. That's a fair pick. Um, so then very quickly, uh, this is this is another tough one. So outstanding music composition for a series, original dramatic score, Loki, only murders in the building, Schmigadoon, which I've seen, which is also really funny. Uh, Severance, that. Succession, and The Flight Attendant. So Loki for that one. So Loki for that Loki one. for the whole yeah, score. Exactly. Severance is a close second. But Loki. I just, damn it. Man, it's so good. Um, you can't make me do this. Um, music, okay, then music composition for a limited series or anthology. You have The White Lotus, which will probably win. Uh, though the other four category, other, sorry, other four nominees are pretty interesting. You have 1883 for all the people who love Yellowstone, A Very British Scandal. Station Eleven and Moon Knight. Ooh. I would, I would actually like. I like Moon Knight I score like the a lot. Moon, the Moon Knight score. Yeah, I would pick Moon Knight personally, different. but I think White Lotus wins it. White Lotus wins it. Yeah, White Lotus wins that. Um, gentlemen, any other mm, picks? I think that's it. That's it. No, all right. I don't think so. 
there you go. Yeah, because well, they once we get um I think the Emmys are in September, right? Yeah. It is in September the we'll um try to go over maybe September some of the results. Monday, later. September twelfth. Right. So yeah. we'll see y'all in a couple of months with these results. Yeah. We'll uh I think down the road we'll put we'll post up our Emmy picks. Um There's just spoiler a lot alert, of mine's gonna categories. be a very messy. Because I used, I just uh, used my scribble effect, and it's just um, yeah, it's tough. Because there's too many good, there's too many good it's a ones. Lot of categories. I'm really excited. So, uh, and it's on a Monday. It's not airing on a Sunday, but actually on a Monday. So. It's on Peacock. Yeah, we'll be on Peacock and NBC. Yeah. 